Welcome to the Rise Above Project. I'm your host, Joe Peroni. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, champion bodybuilder, and I've been a personal trainer for about 30 years. This podcast is about helping people with their emotional, spiritual, and physical fitness. I value strength, toughness, and truth. I despise complacency, the victim mentality, and following the herd. If you find my work to be valuable, please subscribe to my channel and tell a friend. Today, I want to talk about existential depression, which is something that has challenged me most of my life. Just because I have learned to manage it, does it make it any less important? I believe someone needs to talk about this because many people may feel like they are suffering alone. The first step is to be aware that you are not alone and that the reasons for your feelings are valid and legitimate. The DSM doesn't recognize existential depression and many people such as myself would never meet the criteria for major depressive disorder. Although I have meaning and purpose and I love my life and I look forward to helping people every day, it doesn't change the fact of how I feel. One way to differentiate depression from sadness is that sadness can be traced back to a single event or situation. Many people who feel depressed have suppressed their feelings and can't figure out any reason for their depression. Here are some general basic questions to see if you are an intense person who may live with existential depression like me. And then later I will be more detailed and I'll be a little bit more specific. Uh, here are the questions. Number one, do you see and feel what most people don't? Do you have high expectations of yourself and others? Do you have ideas and interpersonal conflicts that cause you to lose sleep? Are you curious and get obsessed by what you love? Do you hate hypocrisy and need to speak the truth even if people don't like it? Do you feel disconnected because you are an introvert living in an extroverted world? Does willful ignorance annoy you? Are you strong-willed and have an independent mind? Do you have an intolerance for the status quo of society? Are you sensitive to the injustices of society? Does the unfair and unequal opportunities afforded to certain individuals and groups bother you? Do you find it difficult to let go of people, places, and things? Do you feel that people don't understand you because you have multiple interests and pursuits, or perhaps you don't fit into anybody's stereotype? Have you ever been with a bunch of drunk people and wonder, there's got to be more to life than this? If you said yes to any of these questions, you may feel the helplessness of existential depression and the plight of the gifted. Personally, I said yes to each and every one of those. Most people find success in life by a consistent dedication to a goal for as long as it takes. Sometimes the goal may not seem lofty. Just stay consistent enough to pay the bills every month enjoy some entertainment, and hopefully be able to save for retirement. I think many people suffer from boredom and anxiety from the monotonous nature of trying to maintain a stable life. The highs are fleeting and not that high, and one must make believe the ordinary is extraordinary to make it all worthwhile. Perhaps it's a fake unconscious world that leads people to believe their life should resemble a Hollywood movie. As I grow older, I can look back on facing challenges, meeting people, going on vacations, and acquiring a fair amount of material goods. But lately, I've been thinking about two of my friends and colleagues that have died recently, and I wonder, what exactly is the meaning of life? And what is most important and why is it so easy to sum up somebody's whole life in a brief obituary? 
Some complimentary words are spoken in remembrance, but I wish it were more socially acceptable to tell people how much they are appreciated before they die. Soon after the drive home, most people just go back to living a dissociated life, split off from who they are and what is actually important. If I look back on my life, many of the same types of memories keep going through my head. I remember being so excited about WPLJ playing the top 95 rock songs of all time. I may have been about 10 years old. In the summer, we had nothing but time. There were friends and I loved hearing songs that I never heard of before. I could remember carrying around an AM radio and listening to New York Yankee games. And it didn't matter if it was the 138th game in a 162 game season. They all seemed important then. We used to play wiffle ball games all day long. And we even went through the trouble of writing down all the stats. During the 1976 Olympics, we even made up our own 10 event decathlon and all the neighborhood kids participated. I think as life goes on, people forget that the smallest moments in life, they might be the most memorable, meaningful, and transformational. It seems many people want to get out of their own mind and body by being judgmental and holding grudges and numbing themselves or just by physically changing locations. Maybe part of the answer is to remember what it was like to be a child. Living in the moment, being simplistic, and being in awe of just being alive. For me, I just wanted to get the crunchy part of my Italian ice that I got from the Mr. Softy truck. Now, is that being naive? And does being naive actually have a place for an adult in contemporary times? I notice as I get older, I have to say goodbye to more people and to more things than I want to. It's interesting. Global climate change is making the world warmer, but I feel the world is getting more cold and callous every day. It's difficult to stay in touch with the best parts of myself and to hope that my contributions to society actually matter. I feel depression is a normal state for the gifted the conscious, the artist, the emotionally connected, the sentimentalists, the sensitive, the old souls, and the humanitarians. Although depression can be a disorder, I don't believe it's always a disorder. Depression does not have to shrink or depress someone's ability to feel or experience joy. It can be the opposite. Depression can be the expression and result of one's heightened ability to feel. They can take in the beauty, but also mourn the transience of it all. They can experience what James Joyce called aesthetic arrest, the stillness of the body and mind when in the presence of great beauty. The person's inner artistry integrates with the outer world's artistry. This surreal experience can also cause a sense of melancholy. All pleasant experiences are bittersweet because at some point they only exist in the mind and every day is one day further from that experience. Existential depression can be passive anger turned inward due to living in a world so wrought with problems and negativity that it seems virtually impossible to fight back the tide or to make a notable positive impact. The first noble truth in Buddhism is that life is suffering. The second noble truth is that suffering is caused by craving and being attached to impermanent things and everything is impermanent. The third noble truth is that the cessation of suffering is achieved through a healthy detachment of all things. Now, I don't doubt the wisdom of this, but I find it extremely difficult. The thought of being detached while simultaneously engaged with people, places, and things is not completely within my ability at this time. Nietzsche has described Buddhism as a will to nothingness, while Nietzsche believes in the will to power. Nietzsche believes in putting full effort into life and being fully engaged in everything you do. 
If one were to take action or inaction to avoid pain, they would be limiting their capacity for joy. Personally, I want to experience the exhilaration of achievement and risk experiencing the anguish of failure. The words lukewarm, medium, and average don't exist in my vocabulary. A degree of savagery is demanded in almost everything worthwhile. The price of fulfillment is sacrifice and pain. Pain and pleasure work together like happiness and depression. To live is to suffer, but to make life bearable, one must assign meaning in the suffering. No matter how many metaphorical mountains you have climbed, and no matter how many achievements you have earned, nature is a thief. It will diminish you. It will take your hearing. It will take your sight. It will take your youthful bounce. It will take your loved ones, and eventually it will take your own life. To those who love life and refuse to numb themselves, this is depressing. The good news is that you can only be depressed from losing something if you had something to lose. Thus, the meaning of life, as I see it, is to suffer for a good cause as much as possible. As Shakespeare said, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. It's the continuous striving, the relentless reinvention of the self the moving forward that can balance the pain with pleasure. Our forefathers had it wrong. The pursuit of happiness is fruitless. Happiness is not a one-time goal. The happiness is in the pursuit. I've noticed that as time goes on, life becomes bittersweet. When I was younger, everything was new and innocent. Time has challenged me to manage the negatives as well as the pos positives in almost every area of my life. Fairly often, I will wake up in the middle of the night and it will hit me that both of my parents are dead and there is no chance of talking to them again. There are plenty of songs that I like that remind me of people who can't hear them anymore. Bruce Springsteen and Cat Stevens remind me of my father, and the Bee Gees remind me of my mother. And it is the same feeling when I go to the gym. Some people that I have had relationships with for years will not be there anymore. And I didn't have much to miss when I was young, because I never had much to begin with. In my ignorance, I never considered that anything would change. Managing the feelings of longing, being sentimental, empty spaces, and loss is essential if one is to withstand the pressure and nature of life. There are very few areas of my life where there hasn't been some type of loss. It's becoming increasingly difficult to be conscious in an unconscious world. Sometimes I think I've seen too much. I'm tired of people supporting and justifying chil children in cages at the border. How has it become effective to run a political campaign on nothing more than lies and name calling? Is it possible that the people of America now have the emotional development of a five-year-old? I can't stand that more than half of the voting populace can justify racism, sexism, xenophobia, and they support our enemies just because they are angry and they want to see the world burn. The newly empowered anti-intellectual groups don't believe in science. They ignorantly and dangerously don't believe in global climate change. They don't believe in vaccines. And many people believe the world is flat. How is that even possible? People justify the destroying of our land air, water, people, and animals for bloated corporations to make more money. I graduated from St. Christopher's. I had my first Holy Communion and was confirmed, but I don't even recognize the Catholic religion anymore. Peace, caring about the poor, and trying to help the least, the last, and the lost 
has given way to politics more than piety. I can't understand how Jesus has become a gun-toting, hateful, homophobic, lover of the rich, and disdainful of the poor type of figure. Trying to have a meaningful conversation is a minefield these days. People are becoming more angry, confrontational, easily offended, outraged, and worse, they don't even believe in facts anymore. Willful ignorance has now become a virtue. Branding oneself as the new business model. It's difficult to have an interaction with someone without being subjected to their self-promotion and narcissism. Role models are becoming a thing of the past because so many people think they are perfect and they don't look outside themselves for inspiration. Artistic expressions such as music and movies have been declining for years. Most are just remakes. And I can't even watch football anymore. Football is becoming a boring two-hand touch league which mirrors where our soft society is going. It is my personal and professional opinion that existential depression is not something that needs to be cured as much as it needs to be cultivated. Here's why. The traditional, let me say that again, the traditional definition of mental health is based on how well a person can adapt to social and societal norms. Social and societal norms are usually grounded in extreme low-level mental functioning and unconsciousness. By definition, the norms are created by the lowest common denominator of people who have the lowest wattage brains. They also ignore cultural and biological diversity. The empaths, the gifted, and those with existential depression will never conform, capitulate, or be subservient. It is better to experience extreme emotions from doing and knowing the right thing instead of enduring the self-hatred that would come from following the herd. Thus, the definition of what is said to be mental health is flawed. You will never be mentally healthy if you conform to a seriously sick society. It is society that is mentally ill, not the person who is forced to endure it. I see existential depression as a productive conflict within the self that seeks resolution by affixing meaning to one's suffering. Sometimes pinpointing where the suffering is coming from is elusive due to a numb, ignorant, unconscious society that doesn't recognize or validate your pain. This can influence people to second guess their better judgment. Being mysterious and misunderstood does not have to be detrimental. My recommendation is to accept, appreciate, and master the intense insight and emotions which may lead to existential depression. And let this be the fuel and the springboard to experience life to the fullest and to make the best attempt to change the world in small ways and in big ways. I am Joseph Peroni from the Rise Above Project. Please subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you.